You know, sometimes the Night Gallery try to bring classic British horror into the show with mixed results. Now, a version of this was this uh, season two episode, which starred two comedy legends of the era, but kind of miscast in this one. It's called House with Ghosts. Uh, Bob Crane of uh, Hogan's Heroes fame and Joanne Worley of Laughing fame play a faltering American couple in London who buy a dwelling with mixed results again. Now, Season 2, Episode 9, uh, it uh, was offered November 11, 71. Teleplay uh, and uh, direction by Gene R. Kearney with a story by August Derleth. Bob Crane plays Ellis Travers. Joanne Worley is his wife, Iris. Bernard Fox, always good as the ghost of Mr. Canby. Eric Christmas, interesting name, as Ch 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 Chichester. Alan Napier is a doctor. And Trisha Noble as Sherry. Now, Ellie Ellis and, uh, has recently moved to London with his wife, Iris, and already has a young British woman as his mistress. Uh, Sherry's impatient with Ellis and wants him to leave his wife. Now, he thinks he may have found a perfect solution, move with his wife into a haunted house, and let things take care of themselves. After all, Iris has an interest in ghosts, and she's always prone to dizzy spells. One good scare, and she could accidentally suffer a fatal fall downstairs. And those stairs seem to be the stairs featured on several previous Night Gallery stories, such as the cemetery, certain shadows on the wall, and a doll. Nothing wrong with recycling here, because everything about Night Gallery is recycling from a sense of plot. Now, according to David Jules' a blog spot, Night Gallery sure got its money worked uh, out of that one staircase. Now, Ellis finds out that his wife's condition is actually terminal, and she only has months to live. He phones Sherry and explains this to her, but she doesn't want to wait for him one more day, let alone several months, to be free of his wife and breaks up with him over the phone. Now, as soon as he uh, hung up on by Sherry, we hear a scream and see that Iris has been yanked out of bed by the unseen ghost and thrown down the stairs to her death. Just as planned, except for the fact that his girlfriend had just broken up with him. Bad coincidence. And aside from the fact that the ghost, the house's previous owner, Mr. Canby, materialized and informs Ellis in exchange for getting rid of his wife, he's going to charge him $2,000 a month for the rest of his life. Where would the ghost spend this money? Maybe a ghost Walmart, we don't know. Now, wondering what need of the money a ghost has, the late Mr. Canby explains that after his death, his widow cut someone out of his will, his own bird on the side, to whom he promised that same sum. Now, the story is played somewhat lightly at times, but it neither succeeds as comedy or as horror, according to Jewel, and as one of the most least memorable segments on the series. Not horrible, just not much of anything at all. But, again, you're looking at the Carlton DC comics uh, horror uh, pulp tales and this for what it is it works two and a half out of four but basically it's a quick story but like I said why would Bob Crane marry Joanne Worley in the first place because no offense to Joanne Worley she's not a she's a beautiful lady but she's never known to be sexual she's more of a like a like a companion so I mean uh, to go all through this rigmarole we're basically you know, she could have had something on the side, and, you know, the Joanne Worley characters the, the, the she played were kind of ditzy to begin with. So you have to understand, for, for example, you can't make Betty White into your serial killer, right? You can't make Gene Rayburn into a cad. You can't make Charles Elsa Riley straight. So there are certain tropes in the 1970s that you have to, uh, you know, look at from a perspective. Does the character, the, the actress or actor in real life, in their non-fiction work, like game shows, really can apply for this type of show. Joanne Worley was a game show contestant. You're going to not going to get Fanny Flagg to play, you know, murder, murder she wrote, or you're not going to get Richard Dawson. Well, you probably could, but you're going to not get Richard Dawson playing, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, a gold hunter, like a prospector in the Old West. It just doesn't work. There's some limitations. So we're getting through a lot of our Night Gallery uh, segments. Keep, uh, keep listening. Uh, hope you really enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, or share. And don't forget, when you're dealing with television, if you grew up in the 1970s, you, you, can, do certain, uh, you can do certain things with certain actors. For example, there was, a, there was an episode of Love Boat where Jimmy Walker from Good Times fame played a ghost that was haunting his wife saying, you know, you should get married. It works there because Jimmy Walker's character is always, you know, looking for the best in everybody in real life and in, 
in uh, you know fiction so it works but you know you're not gonna get Charles Bronson to do the same part or you know Lee Marvin you're lucky to get Lee Marvin to be sober back in the 60s and 70s uh, or <laughs> now he was sober but you know uh, muddy problems uh, palimony anyway thanks for listening bye